Hello and welcome back to another episode of Flower Gold Wizards. Jesus! What in the heck was that? Trying to film here and rocks are falling out of the sky. Look at that, it's a rock. There's a little note on there. Let's see what the heck that says. If I can get that open, let's take a little look. Mm-hmm. Flower Gold Wizards. I found this cool rock and it thought you would might enjoy it and be able to identify it. So I threw it at your shop, Sonny Rico. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that's pretty cool looking rock and one heck of an arm. You gotta try out for the Packers. Welcome back to another episode of Flower Gold Wizards. We are on location, a brand new location. Now I stayed just a little bit closer to home. Uh, I've had my eye on this particular uh, crick for uh, for a while and I just haven't been able to peel off the time to go and uh, do any prospecting on it. Uh, so I found the opportunity today and uh, I'm going to do just that. I'm just going to prospect. Uh, I won't need anything more than this pan right here, this snuffer bottle, and the shovel that's currently holding my phone. Um, I'll, I'll flip the phone around, and I'll show you exactly uh, what we got going on. Back in a bit. All right, it is the end of April, and there's still snow in the woods by my house. So, what I've got in mind is looks like uh, looks like the county did a little bit of uh, repair work to the to the old culverts that were going underneath the road here well this creek goes it just it doesn't look like a whole lot here and it and now uh, you can see that it just kind of goes down into and it's kind of flat and nothing in particular but if you look on google maps uh down there a little ways there's a small pond and then on the other side of that uh there's some really steep banks and it and it, it's wrapping around some turns way up in there and it looks to be not more than maybe a half a mile or so. So we're going to take the walk. And like I said, we're going to be packing light. Then there are some nice, uh, some nice boulders down there and, and, um, and workable gravels. And this is not far away from my favorite creek. Uh, so I think we're, uh, you know, unless this goes through a swamp or something, because the water is quite high yet, it's still melting off up here. I think we're going to do just fine. So, let me grab my gear, let me grab my best buddy, we're going to get the heck out of here. Hey Rig, say hi to everybody. Hey, <laughs> okay, back in a bit. Well, we've been hiking for quite a while. Um, it's tough hiking back in here. All these, I'm not sure what kind of foliage this is, but it's really mangled and twisted and it's tough walking and half the time you're belly crawling and whatnot. And it's, it's still a little swampy from when it was super high water. Now the creek is right, uh, is right, right over in there. I'm just trying to follow it as you know as long as I can see it because it seems to be easier walking along the creek, you know, I don't know, 20 or 30 yards away from it versus right on the banks of it. And I'll flip the camera around and I'll show you what I'm headed for. Okay. Me and Rigby have been going for a little while here. There he is saying hi. And we are walking through all this tangle snarl and mess and that. And uh, you can see the water is right there. The flow is going that way. And we're headed upstream. And I'm headed for those tall trees right there. Now that I can see that like right over in this area, there's a big oak tree and a bunch of tall pine trees and miscellaneous. There's a birch over there, which is telling me that that's a little bit higher ground than the, 
than this uh, mess that I'm walking through, hopefully. Um, now, like I said on Google Maps, it showed a nice steep-sided ravine that this creek was following the edge of, kind of off in a bend like this. So we're going to keep heading that way and see what we can find. Back in a bit. Video update. What I thought was a half mile is about a mile and a half. <laughs> All right. I guess I got to learn how to read a Google map. Uh, that high ground we were looking at earlier is way, way back there. And I was walking this way. And I just walked through this, this mess. It's, it's miserable. <laughs> um, and let me spin around here to where the direction we were going. It just doesn't get any better. It's just all this laid down, miserable, crawl through type uh, underbrush and swamp. Now, I did make it to that really high side and it's right there, right smack there. Now the creek goes away from it quite a ways, otherwise I would have stayed right on the high ground, but I wanted to make sure I was going in the right uh, direction with this creek, so I did. And, uh, and uh, I doubt if I'm gonna go any further that way. It just, it looks all the same. You know, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit further, but the creek goes off in that direction right there. There's the side right there, and there's a real steep side right there, and it's just, it's it's tough. So I'm gonna take a little sample pan out of right there. I'm seeing some decent gravels, and like I showed, that river's coming around this way here, and it's on a bit of an inside bend right there, and it's got a few uh, exposed gravels. As a matter of fact, that now that I'm looking a little bit more, there's like a gravel bar right there. And then it turns into this black, just solid mush here that I've been walking in for for an hour and a half. So um, let me go ahead and take a little sample out of that stuff there and see if there's anything in here. Back in a bit. And it does see appear to have a little bit of sand in there. Uh, but uh, along with that sand, there's a fair amount of black muck. So we're going to bust up some of that. There is a little bit of clay in there. Uh, but I, I can definitely tell that we're going to have some material to pan uh, as far as gravel and, uh, and sand. So let me get this uh, black mush out of the way. And we'll take a little look and see what kind of material we got left. See how black and mushy that stuff is right there and, but there is some decent looking sand and gravels in there and there's some white uh white chunks of quartz etc is that a big gold flake probably not all right so i'll take this and i'll do a little live pan here and see uh see exactly what comes out of there shouldn't be any problem for the old super sluice anybody who does not own a super sluice needs to get one these pans are fantastic, especially if you're just out in the wilderness sampling. I mean, you can move lots and lots of material. And uh, are you gonna get all the gold sampling like this? Absolutely not. But I can move so much material with this baby. And uh, as far as panning goes, I'll be able to get 90% of the gold out of this, out of this material if there's any gold in it. And I'm not worried about that other 10%. You know you can get them big rocks right on out of there and then uh, we'll pull this back and see you know first thing i'm looking for is black sand heavies of any kind lead etc and ultimately gold and this uh garrett super sluice with those great big huge riffles on the back side is definitely the one that you want to prospect with so i am seeing a little bit of black sand um not exactly what I'm looking for. And I have done a couple of pans here and uh, it's just it's just not what I'm looking for 
you know, as far as uh, being able to move uh, amounts of material. So I think what we're going to do is I, I've got the questions answered that I was looking to get answered. So I'm going to grab my shovel there and my, my best pal and my pan, and we're going to boot scoot out of here. I've got a better spot not far from the road. Back in a bit. Well, a brief video update. Uh, rather than walk through all that mess down there at the bottom of this big hill, I decided to walk up on top of this big ridge right here because it's way easier walking. I'll pan around. You can see um, it may look a little branchy, but it's nowhere near as miserable as it is down there. Uh, hopefully, this brings me back out to the truck and the road. I'm not sure. I don't have reception here. I can't pull up my maps, but I can still hear the water running down there. But if I don't make it, Gary Prohaska at Pirate Prospecting, I want you to carry on the can. Thank you. in there again. <laughs> All right, we came down to my favorite trick in the whole wide world in this neck of the woods. And Rigby likes it here too, eh, Rigby? <laughs> so we didn't find any gold at that last spot, and that's just fine. That's how you find spots to have gold. First, you got to find about 50 that don't. And there's another one that don't. Or at least in the spots that I look. And uh, so I'm not leaving here today without finding a little bit of gold. So I came down here and I already got my sluice set up right here. And it's, it, it couldn't run any better than it is now. I got just the right amount of water going through there. And uh, the water is crystal clear. It's going to be really nice, easy digging. And I'll show you where I'm going to dig. Now I did a video, well, lots of videos from this spot or this, this creek, and I have dug here before. Here's a pretty deep hole from where I've I've actually gotten some pretty good gold out of right there. And uh, I think today I'm gonna push up that way just a little bit. I can still walk around this hole and uh, you know, relatively easy to get to my, to my sluice right here. And now uh, there's a nice deposit right, right here behind this big old log. Look at this deposit here. And, uh, you can tell by the size of the gravels in here and there's still a lot of sand mixed in with it that uh, it's it's not just all washed through and out of there. You can tell the flow is quite a bit less right here than it is over there. And uh, I think we're gonna do pretty decent here. And there's a, some little waterfalls up in there and I've worked in the past. But I think I'm just gonna spend the rest of my uh, my day right right down here. So let me grab my grab my shovel and we'll do just that. We'll start shoveling. Back in a bit. Alright, here's shovel number one. Let's take a little look at the material we're going through here. Pretty nice, uh, you know, it's got a really nice mix of gravels in there, fist size, some walnut size, and right down here typical gravels and black looking sand. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some of that on there. See what happens. Looks to be washing off of there. I might have to pull some of them bigger rocks off of there, but that's just fine. This is the best barn sluice in the whole USA. Top Cat Gold Prospecting Adventures. I know you like your Goldie Box. We might have to have a little competition someday. Let's take another shovel on there and see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's nice. And I've had questions in the past on why why I didn't bring my screen all the way down to the end. Well, I'll tell you. This way I can see how fast those riffles are clearing out in there. All right. Now, as long as there's still blonde sand coming across those riffles, I'm not gonna throw another big scoop on there. As soon as I stop seeing the blonde sand work its way out the end right here, I'll just let it run. 
And when, I, when it looks like it's cleared out enough, well, then I'll throw another one on there. Well, see all that stuff's just gravel. There's no more, uh, no more sands in there. Maybe just a couple up on top there, but I give them a little scoop, and then we're right through and gone. So, I'm gonna scrape this through for about an hour straight without even looking at it, and then we'll take a peek. What a beautiful day, back in a bit. All right, we've been running for an hour. It's cleanup time. Let's see if there's anything in the sluice. We'll go ahead and throw that right in there. We'll do a little cleanup right here. Pull that screen out of there. We'll give her a little splash. And done. There's our material. Looks like a decent amount of black sand. Let's throw it in a pan and see if we got some gold. That's why we're here. Back in a bit. And there it is. A couple little pieces right there. There's my finger. See that? Let me get that back in the shade there a little bit. One, two, three, four little dots. Teeny weeny little dots. One a little bit bigger than them other ones, but they are tiny, teeny weeny little dots nonetheless. And I think I saw a couple of minus 500 trillions in there uh, as well. And I'll probably get them out of there, but it's taken, taken a while there. That was a lot of black sand. Rigby over there, he's already taking a nap. <laughs> Close to it. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Flower Gold Wizards. Uh, we went out and tried a couple of spots today, and I got some questions answered about one spot. It doesn't really pay for me to go back there. Uh, Rigby had a great time running through the black muck. <laughs> he always does. Uh, so I just wanted to see a little bit of gold in the pan, so we came to my favorite spot, and it didn't disappoint. We found a little bit of gold, so we're going to boot, out, boot scoot out of here and find something else to do the rest of the day. I just want to thank you guys for coming along. And uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and please leave a comment. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page in the description below. Half the money goes back to you guys at Gold Pay Dirt Giveaways. Flower Gold Wizards, out. I got a pretty darn cool rock, too. Coming in hot, Sonny. Yeah.